this year I've come to Loch Erm, one of the great Irish mayfly lakes for my mayfly fishing. Here we are going to test the emergers, the duns and the spinners that we can tie to match the natural life cycle of the mayfly. For the fly fisher for wild trout, the highlight of the year is mayfly time. There is no doubt about that. And here we are at mayfly time by Loch Erne in the west of Ireland. Here by the loch side, a cloud of mating mayfly spinners rises in the air on fluttering wings and then glides down to impress a mate. This is the start of the mayfly life cycle, a complex life cycle where the eggs are laid on the water, the eggs hatch and grow as nymphs, the nymph is going to hatch as a dun at the water surface and then the dun is going to grow into a spinner. This is the life cycle that we're going to look at in some detail now and to look at the flies and the use of those flies to catch trout. Now I've caught a mayfly spinner for you from a column uh, and we're going to look at it. So it's here in my butterfly net. Here we go. Handle it very gently. First of all, look at those three tails. The tails are twice as long as the full body length. Very, very fine, long three tails. This is a male. Um, I can tell that because at the tip of the abdomen there are a pair of claspers which it uses to pass on the sperm to the female. Three pairs of legs of course makes it insect. And notice the body colour. If you remember in the done the body colour is uh, more of an olive, in the mayfly the body is quite white with dark markings. And similarly if we look at the wing of the mayfly spinner, When the females have laid their eggs, they die on the water, usually in quiet corners, just out of the wind. The Irish call these spent, or spent gnat. They aren't a gnat at all, of course, they're one of the mayfly upwing fly group. But if you hear an Irishman talk about the spent gnat, that's what he's talking about. And notice how they do die, generally. Three tails spread, white body with black bands, the transparent membranous wings held flat, uh, so that we've got a sort of cruciform flat system on the water. Frequently, anglers try and catch uh, uh, trout uh, on mayflies using a spinner with a big hackle which stands it off the water. And frequently they don't catch because the trout is selecting the fly in the surface film. And therefore we've got uh, a beautiful mayfly spinner there, flat, dead in the surface film. Some mayfly spinners die uh, with one wing up and one wing down. And a pal of mine, Phil White, discovered that uh, sometimes the trout are so selected that they want that wing up, wing down in the artificial fly, and he ties a few of his mayflies with a wing up. Well, trout will select mayflies, mayfly spinners that are moving, twitching in the last throes of death, like this one. Uh, so again, sometimes it's worth tweaking your fly to try and imitate that last throes of life on the point of death behaviour. The technique at mayfly time, whether you're fishing dry or wet, is to fish a drift most of the time, especially during the dun hatch. And here we are, John and me, and then a boat beyond us, and we're just going down. And we're keeping our dry flies on the water and just retrieving the slack line as it develops, keeping an eye open all the time for any fish that may well rise. And if a fish does rise, you immediately cover it. Notice how close the other boat is. The other boat, in fact, is in a better position than we are, near to the bank in the shallows. And we're just looking for mayfly or trying to get a mayfly to come up to our dry flies. Now, by contrast, this gentleman here is waiting for mayflies to be blown around the end of this island, this is Bingham's Island, so that the mayflies will be drifted round, and this is a real hot spot off the point there where that isolated tree is. And he's waiting to ambush a, a, a trout uh, that is taking mayflies drifting round. Real hot spot, that. Don't forget to varnish the head when you're finished. Good way that. And there you have a French partridge gosling. You can fish that as a top dropper with a team of wet flies, pulling it back through the wave, bobbing it in front of the boat as you drift along, 
or you can grease it up and pull the fibres forward a little bit more and fish it as a dry fly. That's just one of scores of goslings. If you go into a title shop in Ireland and say, can I see your goslings, your wet mayflies, there'll be boxes of them. All different colours, different shades. When you get in there, choose a nice selection. They're all based on that general pattern, and then you can tie them all up. But that is as good as they come.